Hey everyone, this is Matt McCool with Motion VFX, and today we are releasing in product for DaVinci Resolve. So if you make product reviews or maybe you're selling a product online, this pack is going to have all your graphics and transitions and overlay effects to make those videos look extra polished. So let me go ahead and show you around inside Resolve. All right, so after you've installed in product from the Im Installer application, it can be located in your effects panel up here. Under video transitions and motion VFX, there are six transitions coming down here to titles. We also have a total of 44 titles, including calls to action, infographics, logos, and typography presets. And lastly, under effects, there are nine total effects with this pack, three effects, and six placeholders. So I'm just going to go to the very top, click on toolbox, and search for M product. And this will bring up everything in the pack all in one location. So let's start off by looking at these effects here. So this multi-grid is actually really useful. It can be used on up to six different clips. So right here on my timeline, you can see I've got these three clips stacked up together. And if I select them all and then right click and choose new fusion clip, that will bake them all together into a convenient fusion clip right here. And now I can drag on this multi-grid straight on to this fusion clip. And over here in the inspector under effects, under effects controls, you can see we have six different grid size layout presets. Now, like I said, this will work with up to six different clips. Because I only made this comp with three clips, we are just going to see black down here. So I'm actually going to choose the three by one layout. I want these three vertical cutouts for each clip across the screen there. And right above that, you can see animation type. There are a couple different presets for how these kind of animate in. And uh, it's kind of hard to preview because each of these clips is 4K, 60 frames per second, you know, 10 bit. So it is kind of heavy to play back. So uh, what I'm going to do is make sure my render cache is turned on and I'm just going to right click and come up to render cache fusion effect filter and just toggle on that effect. And we'll get a red bar across the top of this clip. And as we play through that, it will turn blue and that will enable us to have real time playback on our timeline. So this is the fit animation and I'm gonna try something like reveal. And I think that one looks a lot nicer for this particular effect here. And I could also slide this third panel over here, kind of reposition so we can see that detail. I might even wanna scale in a bit like this. And maybe for this center panel, we can kind of animate this across time. So if I go to the very beginning, you can see uh, we just have a black screen. So I'm going to temporarily turn off the in and the out animation up here so that we can see the entire effect across time. And on my media to position, I'm just going to slide this over a bit like this. Actually, let's start from this side. So I'm going to add a keyframe and then I'm going to go to the very end of that clip. And let's just slide this over to reveal more of the right side of this clip here. And now we can turn on the in and out animation again. And let's see what that looks like. And of course, we could also edit the text down here. That's going to be in the text controls right over here. I'm just going to leave that as is. But of course, you can make this say whatever you'd like. You can also adjust the color of the frame here. So we can make it a white color. And of course, our lines here have a separate color control. That's going to be the grid line controls right here. So if we wanted to, we can make everything white. And now, of course, we might want to make the text black so that we can actually see it. So tons of customization with this single effect here. All right, let's take a look at this split screen effect. This one's pretty similar, except this one just works with two clips. So I've got these two clips here and Instead of just applying this effect across the entire duration, I kind of want this shot here to kind of linger. You can see we pull into focus and I want the effect to kind of start right here. So what I'm going to do is just make a cut right here and then I'm just going to grab the tail end of this clip and the clip above it and we're going to right click and make these two into a fusion clip and then we can drag on the split screen effect right on to that fusion clip like this. And I'm going to right click and turn the render cache on for that effect as well. And you can see we got this cool up and down layout. Maybe I want this to be vertical. So we'll go over into the effects controls and just switch this into the vertical layout option. And this one gives us two different offset modes. So if we leave this on custom, this will let us kind of change the split position manually like this. If we leave it on center, then each clip here will stay center in their own little box there. So it kind of slides in. That way we can actually see the center of the frame for that entire 
duration of that comp there. And we could also change the position of each of these clips. So maybe I want this a little bit more centered like this. And because we are cropping the top and bottom, we've got a little bit of extra room to kind of reposition that there. Super clean, nice way to present a feature of a product. All right, so moving on to placeholders. Now these will use either a video or a picture. So here you can see I've got a clip here and let's try this placeholder number two. And if I drag this straight on to this clip here, you can see that it just starts already in its final position. There's zero animation. And this is of course because this clip has already been trimmed and this particular placeholder preset has a built-in animation, but it starts on frame zero. So what we're gonna have to do is, let me undo this real quick. We're gonna right click and convert this to a fusion clip. And now you can see this actually starts at frame zero. So whenever we drag on this placeholder two preset, we'll actually see the proper animation. And of course this could be completely customized. You can go into drop zone controls and choose photo if you wanna browse for a specific photo instead. But by default, the video will just show whatever clip that you drag the effect onto. And of course you can reposition the clip inside of the little square there. And then under title controls, you can of course customize all of this. Subtitle controls, this is the smaller text there. And then the price and the frame control right here. So you can change the color. If you wanted this to be more square, you can just lower the roundness. You could mess with the thickness and really customize this to fit your brand. Now, if you have your frame roundness all the way to zero, you can see this little square inside is still rounded. So under drop zone controls, we might want to reduce the mask roundness so that it's also a square like this. Now there's another one I really like called screen division. And let's actually put this on the clip right below, but I'm gonna put this one above our existing placeholder. Let's just drag on screen division right onto this clip here. And you can see this one kind of slides your clip down with some text on the other side. We could even flip the position. I think this layout works better for this particular clip. And then under drop zone controls, I might want to reposition so that we can see more of this needle there. So this almost works like a transition and finally lands on that clip that you apply the effect to. And of course, you know, the bottom here goes black. So I might want to just extend that clip there so that we have at least something else to look at until this clip covers up the full screen. So it's just a really elegant way to present some data along with a piece of media. All right, so let's take a look at these calls to action. Now these are all simple and elegant way to kind of remind your audience or your viewers to take action. You can see this one has two customizable text options with a neat little minimal animation in between. Number three has a pretty cool little arrow design there. And we also have a couple different price tags. This one kind of flips up, revealing the cost of an item. I really like number two. This one has a whole barcode and everything. So if you drag this onto the timeline, check this out. Over here under the graphics controls, you can either choose barcode or drop zone. So if you have your own barcode or maybe even a QR code, you can select drop zone and browse for that image there. So your viewers can scan the screen and take you to a portal or some kind of website or something right there from this graphic super easy to use. If you don't have a custom barcode or a QR code, you can select barcode and customize this using the barcode seethe and kind of get a unique barcode every time you use this preset. So it's not just a pre-rendered animation, this is actually fully customizable. So you can see it has a really nice animation to reveal that barcode. All right, so let's take a look at infographics. Now these are a really simple way to display all kinds of information. So this very first circle rating preset, this one actually has five different parameters that we can adjust. I'm gonna go into my content controls and just move this right up to the very top so it's a little bit easier to see. And now under the description controls, you can see here we have an independent text control for each of these categories and they correspond with these value controls. Now this is really neat. So the value actually represents the number that it eventually counts up to, as well as the circle that proportionally matches. So for example, if you go to 200, that's gonna fill in the circle all the way. So if we did like 100, that will show half of a circle. And these will of course count up to that input number. And so you can customize each of these categories and kind of display specific statistics. The circular meter is very similar, except this one just shows a single stat and this one goes up to 1000. Now take a look at these charts. These are also really interesting. So let me go ahead and drop this right onto my timeline, maybe right here. 
So you have two different axes. You've got your value and your category. So over here, you can of course customize your text. Maybe you want to list uh, the hertz of a speaker. Let's go ahead and move this one over to the side so it's a little bit easier to read as well. And you can of course customize the category axis. That's gonna be the horizontal list below. And you can see that we don't have a line here. So under the chart controls here, we can change the chart input value here. So we can say, you know, 10 for 10 months. This will go all the way down to one and all the way up to 15. And there are 15 value sliders that correspond with each line here. And so you can just simply drag these up and down and adjust their values. So again, super customizable, a really nice way to show, you know, any kind of statistic that needs those two axes. You can get really creative with these. Now chart number two is similar. Let me go ahead and override chart one with this one. Now, instead of having a value input, you can just simply drag the width and the height of the overall chart. And of course, just like the other preset, you've got your category axis and your value axis. So you can customize the text down here in the bottom and on the side. But for this one, you've got a value one maximum and a value one minimum. So you can kind of change the overall range here and really customize this chart. And this one kind of animates on in a really nice way. Now list number three, for example, this is a full screen graphic. It's a great way to kind of compare multiple models or certain kind of product within the same category. You see this kind of thing in product reviews all the time. So there it is, just a simple way to add this to your video and customize the information to fit the topic of the video. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to logos. Now there are five logos included in the pack. Each of these have a customizable drop zone area where you can add your own logo. Number three kind of has this glitchy type of effect. Now there are two of these sponsor presets. Now this first one right here, let's go ahead and put this somewhere on our timeline. Now with this one, you can see we have six different logo drop zone areas, but under logo controls, we can decide how many logos we want. And if you change the value, you can see that it automatically recenters, which is nice. So you can have, you know, three different logos. And of course we could go ahead and browse for different kinds of PNGs. And you can see this one has a cool little animation, it kind of blinks each of those logos on, really nice. All right, let's move on to the typography category here. Again, these are pretty self-explanatory. They all have a really elegant way of displaying information. Now a couple of presets I want to point out. So we've got a couple of these kind of call out style presets. Now with this particular one, let's go ahead and go to the content controls and just reposition this so that we can actually read it. Now if you wanted to change the direction of the pointer here, you can do that under the element controls right here. So you got the call out start and end point. So we might want to position the end point over like this. And then under the title, we can just go into the position and kind of re center this over there and do the same for the subtitle just to make sure that those are actually on the right side of this pointer and so from here we can kind of reconfigure the overall location and this has a nice little sleek animation that fits with the rest of the style in this pack description number seven is another kind of call out style preset so with this one you know if you try to go into the line control and reposition the word to go kind of over here. Let's go ahead and reposition this like that. You probably don't want a shape <laughs> that looks like this. So what we could do is use the line distance instead and just position this in the negative, something like this. Let's go ahead and move this up here. And what I think is helpful is you can kind of adjust the line distance first and go into your main title here and go to the position and just kind of realign this with the beginning of that line. And then we'll go to the subtitle control and kind of push this right over here. And we might want to readjust the line distance so that it kind of fills this entire line right there. And you can also adjust the end point right here. So you can really customize where this thing points your audience attention to. Okay, so lastly, let's take a look at a couple of these transitions now. Like all transitions, you have to make sure that you've got enough footage on both sides of your cut point. Otherwise, the transition will have no footage to transition between. So these are really cool. Let's go ahead and drop this one in between these two shots here. You can see this one kind of slides over and even has some customizable text. And there's even an element control here. So you can turn that off if you don't want that or we can change the size. 
Now I want to show you a pretty cool trick here. So I'm going to delete this transition here and let's actually use number six. This one's got this really cool arrow that reveals the upcoming shot. Now let's say I want to put a title right above this clip. So I'm going to use title number one here, something like this. Now what if we wanted this title to also be affected by the same transition? Well, if we just try to drag the end point to the same duration of a clip and then hold alt and then drag our transition right up to the title here, you can see it actually doesn't work because this transition needs an upcoming shot in order to transition into and this title doesn't have that. And so we're still going to have our title inside of the arrow. So I'm going to make some more room and move this description up a level. Now I'm going to hold alt or option if you're on a Mac and drag this clip up to create a copy. And then I'm going to grab both of the endpoints of the title and this clip and drag them so that they meet the end of this transition. And now I'm going to select both of these, right click and choose new compound clip. And now this is essentially one piece of media. And now if I trim it back to the original duration here, remember now we have additional frame handles on the right side of that cut. So a transition like this will actually work. So now I'm just going to select the transition and hit control or command X to cut the transition. And I can drag my compound clip back down to override the original clip. And then I'm going to click on this cut and repaste that old transition back where it was. And now we have that same transition that affects both the title and the clip. So you can see now the arrow properly crops out this title here. And if we need to adjust anything, we can always right click on this compound clip and choose open in timeline. And here you can see the original clip and the title. So maybe we wanted to reposition this over to the right side and maybe I want to change the color of my header so it's also white. Same with my arrow. And I can even position this arrow so it's actually pointing to something useful. So I'll put it over here and then we can rotate to negative 90 degrees. Maybe position this up a bit like this. And now I can double click down here to get back to my main timeline. So there's six total transitions and I think they all look really nice and classy, super useful. This entire pack is really useful. So I think this is going to make review videos and product demos really easy to produce in a very short amount of time. So I hope you check out InProduct. It's available right now on our website for both DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro. There's a link in the description where you can check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.